This is Wayne Goldsmith, and welcome to Sports Thoughts. I've spent 25 years traveling the world, working with some of the world's best athletes, coaches, and teams, trying to discover what it is that they do, how they think, and what it takes to be the best in sport. Subscribe to our newsletter at wgcoaching.com to keep up to date with my thoughts on sport. Okay, welcome to Wayne's World. It's Wayne's World with Wayne Goldsmith. Our regular Wednesday morning coaching guru slash correspondent is Wayne Goldsmith. Now, Wayne is coming to Wellington to present a seminar, Sporting Kids, Their Choice, Their Future. It is next Friday, Friday, July 26th from 7 till 9 at the ASB Sports Centre. I'll be there as well to help facilitate things, although I get the feeling that my contribution will be uh, will be quite a small one. It'll be Wayne talking and then you asking questions. If you're a coach, a teacher, a parent, a sport leader, club official or administrator, you'll get great value from this event. Uh, tickets are only $25 and there's a special discount for radio sport listeners. So go to wgcoaching.com, wgcoaching.com, click on events and then you'll find the uh, you'll find the event here in Wellington next uh, Friday night. And uh, on our Facebook page is the special code for radio sport listeners. In fact, I'll probably give it out at the end of the chat as well. So uh, yeah, we'd love to see you next Friday. Sporting Kids, Their Choice, Their Future, presented by Wayne Goldsmith, who joins us now. How are you doing, Wayne? Well, what an incredible build-up. I don't know if I'm up to it, but it sounds very good. I'm looking forward to working with you, Piney. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it as well, mate. Looking forward to it very much indeed. I want to talk to you today about something which is a bit more painful, though, and that's recovering from not just a narrow loss, but a loss that wasn't even really a loss in the in the typical sense of the word, what the Black Caps went through the other day. All of that training, all of that build-up, all of that blood, sweat and tears to try and win a World Cup and uh, get so close and uh, and be yet so far away. I mean, in, in general terms, is there some, some mental scarring that can occur from, from being in a situation like that? Well, I wish we had two or three hours this morning, mate. I'm sure we could fill it because I mean, this, this is an area that I'm I'm fascinated about because people deal with losses very, very differently. And some people go, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. That's the nature of sport. Get over it and move on. Others feel it very, very deeply. And I'm going to tell you, after talking to, I've talked to Olympic silver medalists who've gone down by the narrowest of margin. And think about that. They've trained 10, 15 years and they've gone down by an absolute toenail or a fingernail or a nostril hair, whichever way it might be. And 20 years later, you're having a beer with them and you're talking about their career and they're still beating themselves up, Pony. They're still lamenting and feeling bad and negative about the fact that because of a, a toenail or a fingernail, that they, they missed out on being the best in the world. And, Look, everyone loves to win. There's no doubt about that. But you've got to keep it in perspective. And sometimes things are completely outside your control. And I, I looked at that the other night. And my first thing was, and I, you know, New Zealand's my second home. I went, what an incredible performance. I mean, these guys from New Zealand, um, who you got the number of times in sport, you, you play way outside your weight division and just conquer the world. And to go down in that fashion, sure, it hurts. But the sense of pride and admiration for that team has got to be very strong. Oh, look, and it is among the sporting public, absolutely. There's there's nothing but pride. There's a bit of mental scarring from fans as well, and I'm sure that will uh, will wane. But you, you talked about, you know, 15, 20 years later when, when athletes are still talking about that. Surely it can't be healthy to carry that baggage for that long. Well, it can't, and... I think what we're getting better at now, and, and one of the, the great things I know we do with sports psychologists is we do debriefs. And as soon as the competition is over, so if you're an Olympic team, for example, if the competition finishes on uh, Tuesday, then usually the coaches will meet Tuesday night, talk about the experience. The team will come together Wednesday morning or very soon after and say, OK, guys, let's talk about it. And any pain, any discomfort, any anger, any frustration and, of course, joy and exhilaration, depending on 
how people feel about is all expressed. And usually at those meetings, you have a, a psychologist, you have a team leader, maybe some senior athletes who've been through it before, sit there and listening and say, right, looks like Piney's really struggling with this. Let's give him support. So the post event support systems are much, much, much better than they used to. And the reason why they're so good now, the reason why we support athletes so much after an event where there's been a success or a failure is because of what we've learned from these athletes who carry the pain and carry... And, and point out, the, 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 it's, it's both understandable and bizarre that I've, I've spent a lot of time with swimmers, as you know, and I've met... You know, people that have been Olympic silver medalists, world championship medalists, I mean, these, these people are remarkable athletes who consider second and third a horrible failure. They consider their whole career, all the incredible achievements to be failed. That's not right. That is, I mean, you know, you've got a fire in your belly to win that, that drives so many elite athletes. And, and that's, that's in any field of life, uh, walk in life fire in your belly about trying to be the best, that's great. But then that self-destructive thing, because you missed out by a tiny margin. I, I, the story I love to tell, Piney, is that you guys, let's face it, and this is a dangerous area for an Australian to be in, you guys narrowly won the World Cup 2011 in rugby, right? And I was lucky enough that Wayne Smith invited me to come along and listen to the debrief. And the stuff that you were doing, that the NZ Rugby Union were doing, the All Blacks were doing, in terms of player preparation, mental skills, leadership, it was 20 years ahead of the rest of the world. It was remarkable what you were doing. And I thought, imagine if you guys went down by one point. Everyone would have seen the team as a failure. But what I saw was the leading team sport group in the world. Coaches Innovation, uh, Gilbert and Noka, I mean, the, the leadership of the team. It, 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 the things that you were doing, were mind-blowingly better than AFL and NRL and everything else. And I thought, yeah, but you go down by a point, everyone thinks you're a failure. That's when the perspective hits and says, well, no, hang on a minute. Win or lose, look at the overall wonderful achievement of the team. Celebrate so much of what you've done. Deal with the disappointment. Deal with the pain. Address the heartache. And then let's get up and go again. Yeah. Uh, I'd, look, 2011 is a great example to use because uh, Sir Graham Henry has said subsequent to that that he was sitting in the stand with 20 minutes to go where France were attacking the All Blacks line thinking, where am I going to live if we lose this game? Because we can't stay in New Zealand. It won't be it won't be tenable. He might have been half joking, but but you know what I mean, Wayne? It's, you know, how much of it also is these these elite athletes who know that the hopes of a nation or the hopes of a fan base uh, are resting on them? Do they feel, you know, as much as they feel personal disappointment for not being able to to, to win, do they also feel, you know, A, having let their fan base down, but also B, f- fearing a backlash from that fan base? Yeah, that's, and that's their additional complications. And I, I would, I, you'd, you'd know for a fact that all those black cap guys would be sitting there and they'd be feeling all those things. They'd be feeling that, that you know, they, the coach that taught them to bowl when they were eight, their dad who took them to cricket and sat there and watched them all day. You know, their mum that, that supported them every morning, got up, made them lunch, drove them to training, was there as the as the shoulder to cry on, um, you know, who threw the ball with them in the backyard. The, you know, they'd be looking at their friends, their family, the nation, and for a moment that, that burden, if you like, w- would sit very heavily. What you've got to be able to do, and they'll keep coming back to this concept of preparation. The players need to be able to say, well, okay, that's an emotional pain. I am not my feelings. I am more than my feelings. I am a whole range of other things. The win or the loss doesn't define me as who I am as a human being. But then if they can say, did I do everything I possibly could to play on that day? And if they can say, well, yeah, I couldn't have done better. My diet was great. My training was impeccable, I got plenty of sleep, I managed my alcohol, there is nothing I could have done better I am comfortable that that was the best I was capable of they can move on very quickly, they can deal with the pain of the loss and the pressure and the expectation they can deal with that quite well because they know there's nothing they could have physically mentally, technically tactically, emotionally done better and then the loss still hurts, it still burns but it never sits well it sits a lot better with you if you get, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say there's nothing 
I could have done that could have changed that result. And I think for the Black Caps, I mean, I, I, every element, the man, the fielding, I was watching a highlights package last night, and it was the top 10 catches from the World Cup, and I think five of them, four or five of them were New Zealand catches. Fielding was brilliant, which is always an indication of a great team. Uh, the leadership was outstanding. I mean, there, there's, you know, to get beaten at Lords by the home team, by a technicality in the rules, is, is quite a remarkable achievement. Mm. As we've been talking, a couple of texts have come in and said that uh, it might be an idea for, for some of these black caps who are going to continue to play um, to to get counsel from some of the All Blacks of 2007. I'm thinking guys like Dan Carter and Richie McCaw and, uh, and Tony Woodcock, for example, who played in a, in a, in a losing All Black side, not a final, but a, but a quarter final, a devastating loss, and then bounced back to win in 2011. Is, is, I mean, there must be sort of some cross-code synergies that, that might be helpful in a situation like this. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, so that's, that's an outstanding suggestion because they're team sport athletes, they're proud New Zealanders, and they're successful athletes. And they understand exactly the pain and the expectation. That's, that's a great example. And I even look at that when I'm working with age group kids, when I'm working with young players, is they, I don't think there's any point having a super rugby player talking to someone who's been experienced loss or disappointment at 12, 13. But I quite often get 15, 16 year olds to talk to them who've been there and have got empathy and have got understanding. And I think that that connection of someone sitting down and saying, man, I feel your pain. I've been there. I know what it feels like. I know what it's like getting off the plane and having some, with respect, journalists stick a camera in my face and say, so you must be disappointed at losing. You know, you, you get, we've been through that. We understand that. Well, I'll feel your pain. And then to say, can I help? Is there anything I can do to help? Or if you've got anything you want to talk about, if you're struggling, if you're battling, if you're, you're finding that you're losing a bit of motivation, here's my phone number. Give me a call, as well as obviously professional support through psychs and counsellors and, and so on. But I, 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 mate, I think that's a great. Whoever made that suggestion really gets it because that connection between players. Uh, that's I mean, if you look at Olympic teams now, quite often it's very common. Uh, the Australian Olympic team, for example, they got people like John Earls and Steve Waugh on the Australian Olympic team, only there to sit down with athletes and say, "I get it. I understand it. I'm here. I'm going to listen." I'm not going to fix your problems, but I understand where you're coming from. I'm someone that you can bounce some ideas and share some feelings with. They say you've got to lose one to win one sometimes. Uh, if this this Black Cap squad or members of it go on to win the next Cricket World Cup, I'm talking hypothetically here, of course, Wayne, you know, d- does does success taste sweeter when you've had the bitterness of defeat? It, it really does. It, it really does. And having been through a couple of losing Olympic campaigns myself and then to turn around and win a world championship the following year or to win a gold medal a few years later. It is it is very sweet because, you know, I, mate, I remember, you know, a long time ago being at Olympic Games with a head coach and, and I went out to have a coffee. I was looking for somewhere to have a coffee in the city early in the morning. It was about 4 a.m. walking around and I, and, and I was feeling, I thought, oh, we were so close. You know, God, that hurt. And I was walking around trying to deal with it and coming the other way was the team head coach and he was exactly the same. He was feeling the same and, and uh, we laughed and gave each other a bit of a hug and we found a place for coffee. And he said, golly, he said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to write the plans for the next Olympic campaign right now while it's fresh in our mind. And mate, we sat down and wrote pages and pages. A lot of it was just venting and and uh, feelings and emotions. But there was some really good stuff and I know that uh, a year later, when we went back and looked at that, that that freshness, you know, that that real freshness of bleeding, if you like, was there from sitting in the coffee shop at five a.m. and just pouring out what did we learn? And part of that was I don't want to go through this again. I am not going to go through this pain and heartache. I'm going to I'm going to lift. We're going to work harder. Our attention to detail will be greater. Our tendency to compromise will be less. I think you make some commitments to yourself in that environment that you sometimes forget. And I, I encourage, it'd be something I'd certainly be encouraged the Black Caps is to write down everything they're feeling, that they're thinking, that they've learnt, and just have it there partly to vent the emotion a little bit, but also it's a great resource to go back and say, right, I, what did I learn at that moment? What did I learn about myself? What did I learn about my team? What did I learn about 
that situation is it's a great learning opportunity, that pain. Mm. Brilliant stuff, Wayne. What a great uh, what a great chat, as per usual. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to hear more sports thoughts, subscribe to our newsletter at wgcoaching.com.